Good afternoon. Thanking God for a hot summer day and all of the beautiful things that go along with it. So many people are at the lake or at the beach in their pools, but God is still God and God work goes on. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He is constantly loving on us and constantly providing for us and wanting us to, to be equipped, wanting us to grow up spiritually into his kingdom. And it's a kind of an honor and a privilege just to be found in his house and doing what he has called me to do. I didn't know years ago he called me to do this. I was many, many years ago in my 20s, I was so shy, my knees would tremble and stomach would rumble and just to get up and sing a solo. <laughs> but God, through the Holy Spirit, he makes us bold. When the Holy Spirit comes in, he makes you bold. He makes you, he takes away all the fear and he gives you confidence. It's confidence in knowing him. But tonight we're going to, to equip you in his word, we're going to speak about God's word works. It works. His word will not fail. You know, God's word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. He says, beginning in St. John, one in one, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And as we go back to Genesis, we see God spoke, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. And he created the animals, and he created man and woman, and created the trees, and the moon, and the stars, and the waters, and the planets, and we see everything was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. But in order for things to work, action has to be taken. We have to do something. First, we got to believe. We had to believe in God. We heard the word. The word taught us through a preach preacher. How can they hear how can they preach except they be sent through a preacher? So the word had to come forth. Because I know myself, I heard the preacher, but when I wasn't saved, I would read the scriptures and I didn't understand. It was like, what are they talking about? Trying to separate the natural from the supernatural, from the carnal to the spirit. And then thank God for the Holy Spirit. Once I accepted Christ and kept hearing the word and believing, then I sought understanding. The word. Matthew, so I'm going to read a bunch of scriptures just to let you know. It's, it's all over the Bible. It's Old Testament. It's New Testament. But it's God's word. It was in the beginning. He is Alpha, the beginning, and he is Omega. And so what is he? We don't see him. We don't see this high, supreme, omnipotent, almighty God standing somewhere every day, <laughs> directing us <laughs> or directing traffic. But he said, I come to live in the hearts of men. So God is God all by himself. The, Matthew seven twenty four says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. The water and the winds came, and it could not shake that house. You know, we will hear so many things. We want what man say to work. <laughs> we want what we say to work. You know, every man think he's righteous in his own eyes. But when you line your life and your thought processes up with God, you will find, oh, I wasn't right that time. The word says this. The word says that. I'm thinking this way. Or my friend told me such and such. Or the newscasters are saying something. If it don't line up with the word, it's not going to work for you. 
You know, some are saying run to the hills and be a doomsday prepper and hide and store. And, and we know God is a provider. <laughs> you know, we don't have to go hide and live way out in the desert and have our rifles with us and our guns and build up a tower and a fence. We know God, his word protects us. His, God, his word is our weapon. His word is our strong tower. Luke 5 and 5, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Jesus told the fishermen, his disciples, to let down your nets. They had been trying to do it their way. A lot of times we'll toil <laughs> and we'll work so hard and try to do it our way and get nowhere. But when he told them to let down their nets and they figured, what have we got to lose? We haven't caught anything yet. They put those nets in the water and they were overflowing. They could hardly bring up the nets. They were so full of fish. Second Timothy 3.16, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may thoroughly be equipped. He wants us to be equipped for every good work. You know, if I'm a teacher, I got to get equipped for the first day of school. You got to put up those bulletin boards. You got to have all the uh, your lesson plans done for the week or the month. You got to know all your students. You got to get your list ready. Okay, I'm going to have this many students. This is their names. You send out postcards to the parents. You got to be equipped. You got to make sure you have all the books for every subject ready in their desks or sitting on their desks, their name plates on their desks, your schedule done for the whole every day, what you're going to teach this day, what time. So your principal will know what time to come in and see you teaching math or see you teaching reading. You got to be equipped. Before you even get to be a teacher, you got to have studied and gotten a degree at some college where they teach you the methods of teaching math and reading and science. And then you got to go spend five, six weeks having a mentor, a teacher, sitting in our classroom observing and making sure you know her routine or how they do it. So you won't just start off and, what do I do? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> you got to learn how to check the roll every day to see who's there and, and keep records and keep the grades. And you got to be equipped. Well, even as a child of God, we got to be equipped for the storms of life that comes before us. And so we won't be in a frenzy. I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? You know, we don't need to have a shouting match with our boss or a shouting match with our family or a shouting match with people in the grocery store or the road rage just because they are riding so close behind you in the car. So the word is there to equip us for every good work. Now, if this wasn't true, Pastor Cross talked about truth this morning. If it wasn't true, it wouldn't be in the Bible. His word is truth. God doesn't lie. He is real. So it works. It's there for us to use, to apply. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Wow. How can the word cut like a knife? How can it get down to the bones? It said, even the joints and the marrows. And the word, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. His word works. Sometimes God may want you to speak something strong to a person, but it's going to go out. He said, my word will go out and accomplish what I have set it out to do. It will not return void. Man may act like they didn't hear what you said. They don't want to do what you said. But the Holy Spirit job is to do the penetrating and the cutting. Just speak the word. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men 
but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually work also in you that believes. It effectually works also in us that believe. I'm here to tell you today, the word works supernaturally, exponentially, quickly. He said, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It gives you direction. It, it sheds light on the path you should take. There's a road spiritually that God wants us to take where the red lights and the street lights can't guide us there. But the word works. And if we listen, we will see that. Well, how do we get it to work? First, you must receive the word. Either you're going to read it, or you're going to hear it preached. Or it may be some cities have uh, billboards on the highway, God said. You've probably driven out of town and seen those where it says, God said. Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men, or keep my commandments, or something. You're going to hear God's word. I remember when I was younger, I was seeing so much as a little girl in the church. So I'm saying, Lord, what is this? And as a young girl, I heard every man going to have to stand. No man will be without excuse. They can't say, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> you're hearing it on TV. You're hearing it on the radio. You're hearing it in the church house. You're hearing it on the street corner. <laughs> You know, and with the internet, sometimes it just pops up on your internet, on your page. You will hear the word. First, you must receive the word. Second, you must believe the word once you received it. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You've got to hear the word of God. You've got to read the word, whether it's preach, spoken, or read, and not now, some want to continue to hear the word. In order to continue to hear, you got to keep reading every day. He said, take up my cross and follow me daily. It goes against the grain to pick up the Bible. Some think, you know how you're in school, young people. You think, oh, I got to study. Oh, I got to know all those history dates and facts. I got to know all those science elements and equations. Oh, my goodness. And that's like, ugh. I don't want to do it. And the flesh don't want to pick up the word. The flesh don't want to study to show ourselves approved. But we got to do it. But the beautiful, powerful part of it is, while we're studying, he's speaking. If you just hear it in your heart, he's speaking or he's, he's explaining it to us. And you're like, oh, wow, I didn't see that. What you didn't see in the word, just reading it. But you keep reading it. Keep reading it and keep praying and keep reading it and he'll start speaking. You can't hear unless it is the word of God. Just like you know the gossip. You know who's the famous movie star and who divorced who and married who. You know, as teenagers, we used to watch and get the little movie star magazines and watch the TV guide and all the little gossip about the movie stars. What did that benefit? Nothing. <laughs> Sometime on CNN, we hear so much news. But the reporters will only report what brings the ratings up. They're not going to tell all the good stuff that's happened. They're going to tell the terrible stuff to get us, you know, in the controversial news that gets us to draw conclusions and get an opinion about people. But that doesn't equip us for the kingdom of God. You can't hear unless it's God's word. God's word works. Not some man's idea. For instance, after reading and studying the word and reading and studying the word, one morning you'll start, you'll begin to hear him talk to you of what to do. You know, I was praying, I think it was, uh, we were about to have something here and we had that other podium. And I heard on one night, go look on Craigslist where things are reasonable and look for a podium. I said, well, I know we want an acrylic podium. So I didn't do it when I heard it. The next morning I got up and I heard it again. You need to go look on Craigslist for a podium. You know, favor ain't fair. 
<laughs> I don't know how many people heard that word. Or God would, if I wouldn't have heard it, God would have gave the word to somebody else who needed a podium. Here, I looked, and what pops up first? This podium. And so I'm trying to text Kirk. He was somewhere and took a picture of it and sending it to him. I, I don't think he got it, so I had to call him. And then I sent it to Junior, and then he started calling Daddy. And then he called about the podium. And praise the Lord, the podium was way reasonable than what, if we would have went to a church Bible furniture store to get. But it's at God's timing. It's when God wills. And we got, and then we got the other little monument out there, and that came along with it for free. That's God. You got to keep, you know, it's like the word taps you into the kingdom of God. All the other stuff you hear taps you in to this world. The things of this world doesn't benefit us unless it's you're in school, you know, you know. He said, unto Caesar, render those things that belong to Caesar. Unto God, render those things that belong to God. On your job, you got to do what your boss say. As much as you know the word, boss may want you to lie. <laughs> Sometimes you got to take a stand and say, I can't do that. You got to pick somebody else. I can't do that. You know? But the word, as you read his word and hears his word, he will cause your hands to work. He'll cause your hands to war. He'll say, pray. And he say, fight. <laughs> One time I heard him say, fight. Well, fight only meant pray. <laughs> we can pray things through. That's our weapon. Prayer works. We can pray the word, and that works. And that's how we fight the enemy. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Satan, you will not have this. I rebuke you. This is moved out the way. I have peace. I am not contrary. I'm not in an argument. I have peace. I'm going to hold on to my peace because the love of God is shared abroad. You know, we speak the words. You got to keep speaking the words. We can miss also the answers to prayers by not believing and not responding to God's word. You can be reading the word and the spirit will speak. Just that quick. Just that quick. I was praying about something when Angela was a little girl. She was sick and she needed surgery. And the Lord said, <laughs> I opened the scripture and there it was like the words just went, you know how it is with your font. It goes from a size 11 to a size 26. Looked like the page on the Bible just went giant. And it said, is there anything too hard for God to do? And I say, no, Lord. And God healed her. There are things if we just keep reading the word. It's not like a storybook. You read this one, put it down, and pick up something else. It works from 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, even to today. It has power. In the Bible, it talks about Mary when the angel Gabriel visited her and said, Behold, Mary, thou shalt conceive a son. His name shall be called Jesus, and he shall be the ruler of the kingdom of God. And Mary said, how can this thing be, seeing I know not a man? I'm a virgin. And then she said, she believed it. She had to receive it. And then she said, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me, according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, while I was reading that, and I was saying, Lord, how could that happen? The word is quicker, sharper than any two-edged sword. Gabriel was a messenger from God. God knew her because she was a virgin. She was a holy woman. And then she believed it. Some things happen according to your faith. She believed it, she received it. And the Holy Spirit said, as she said that, the seed was planted in her womb. Little baby Jesus. Just that quick. I can't figure it out. I can't see it happen. But I believe it. I believe it. And it happens today in our life. I'm not saying you're going to have a baby <laughs> or anything. But 
God word works. And when she said it, the baby was in her womb. So whatever you're facing today, whatever seems impossible in your life, you know, sometimes we can have mean bosses. I've had some, mm, some strong bosses, but it brings humility on you. You got to obey. You want your job, you got to do what they say. But I had to pray for him. I had to pray for me <laughs> to keep my sanity and to pray for him. Lord, give him a, a soft side. Give him, have him to lighten up a bit. I've never seen him laugh or smile, you know. But God, he can move mountains. Either he'll move the person or he'll change the person. Whatever and whenever you realize that you can't make things happen. You can't be the answer to the problem. I realize my husband and I have been married 40 some years. I cannot be the Holy Ghost. I cannot tell him what to do. I can ask. I cannot make things happen. But God has to quicken his spirit if it's to be so. Or he has to quicken my spirit. God can make things change. But you got to fight and pray and read the word. And he'll give you strategies to use just reading the word. No matter what the problem is, if it's sickness and disease, there are healing scriptures. I am healed by Jesus' stripes. Healing is the children's bread. If you need money to pay your bills, you don't have money, husband can't get a job, unemployment is still look like they take it forever to get you <laughs> where you need to be, you can go to Genesis 26 and 12. It say Isaac sowed in the land in famine. When it was famine means when there's nothing there. When you don't know where it comes from, he might give you a few seeds you find left over from some dried out plants sitting somewhere. And the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. That's miraculous. I've done that before. Wanted to plant seed. I paid my tithes and offerings, but I know... Uh, God said, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed. You can ask and it shall be done. And sometimes your seed may not be vegetable seeds or fruit seeds. Sometimes your seed may not be money. Sometimes your seed may not be uh, giving away a car. We've done that before. Or giving away some clothes or furniture or whatever. But sometimes your seed can be you. Go plant seed. I remember in New Orleans, I was so sick. I'm wondering, what is wrong with me? And then I hear God say, go pray for sister so-and-so around the corner. At least I was feeling terrible and I could get out of the bed. But this woman could not get out of the bed. I walked around the corner to her house. I said, Lord, sent me to pray for you. She said, oh, thank you. And I prayed and we sang and we prayed some more. And walking back... I realize I'm feeling so much better. That's my healing. I gave of myself. We got to sow in famine. Famine is the hard times. How am I going to plant seed and I don't have a mon the money? What well, do you have a dollar or 50 cents? I heard a man say he planted a pencil in the offering during his times of, of lack. And before, before that tray could get up to the altar, somebody saw it and tapped him on the back and handed him $10. And he ran and put the $10 in the tray. You don't know what, just say, Lord, I'm giving this unto you. I'm going to give this bottle of water as my seed. And, I, and Lord, I, I need it, Lord, for food. My kids don't have milk or whatever. We just don't know. Just go do a kind deed. So, so a seed. They said, when Jake, Isaac sowed in famine, he reaped a hundredfold that year of her, herds and flocks and great possessions of servants. You know, sometimes it's hard to get one person to come clean your house or whatever, but he had servants. And then he had, it, it continued. It's like it just kept 
growing and growing. And then it said the people in that land were scared of him and said, you need to depart from us. You're such a great man. You're so mighty. Instead of them asking, what could we do? How did you get where you are? They couldn't take it. They, they just wanted him away. <laughs> but he excelled. He did what God said through his word. And the Bible said there will always be seed time and harvest. There's always a time to plant, and there's always a time to receive. We see those trees. They lose their, their leaves in the fall. Hard storms come through, snow, whatever. And then in the spring, here they bud forth again. We put seeds in the ground. Sometimes there's seeds we planted a couple of years ago, and they lay lying dormant. And I know I didn't plant it a few months ago or weeks ago. And you see this beautiful flower coming up that I had planted a couple of years ago or never planted. Maybe it's from someone else planting it before me. But there are seeds lying dormant. And we always have a seed somewhere. You ever went and searched your pocketbooks or your coat pockets or, and you didn't know it? Here's a $20 bill. You didn't know it was left in the pocket. You probably meant to bring the suit to the cleaner. So I went, was searching through my purses, looking for my glasses, and then, oh, I have a $20 bill in here? I didn't know that. You know, you're moving your wallet from one purse to the other, but there's seed. There's always seed. There's always something for us to plant. Or are we just sitting around doing nothing, and there's always something for us to do? to go help somebody, to go strengthen somebody, to go encourage somebody. God's word works. And because he has blessed us, we can be happy. And people under, don't understand the joy you have, the confidence you have as a Christian. So sometimes you got to just say those scriptures to yourself. I know one time my kids was upset and wanting to fight and mad with each other and grunting and oh my goodness and I used to just yell his banner over us is love <laughs> we gotta love each other sister gotta love brother brother gotta love sister you know all of you have the same name but that don't make you love because everybody's name is Thompson or Allen or Cross or Rodriguez that don't make you love you have to work at loving each other Sisters and brothers came from the same parents. You still got to work at loving each other God's way. You got to forgive. You got to take offense. You got to knock it off and just say, well, I know my brother loves me. He didn't mean what she said. She didn't mean what she said. It's giving and forgiving and loving. So let's pray. Lord, we believe and we confess that the word works. Whether it's healing or sickness and disease, Lord, we know that healing is the children's bread, and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, whether it's somebody having ought against us or setting out to do us harm, Lord, and the enemy has his imps out to just strategize us and to move us and distract us off course, we speak no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, whether it's times of of lack and, and unemployment and barely making it, maybe one ear of corn in the cabinet, Lord. We say the Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My cupboards are full, affording all manner of store. We speak your word back to you, Lord, knowing that your word, you watch over your word to perform it. And we thank you, Lord, that your word does not fail. You say heaven and earth shall pass away but not one dot or quiver of your word shall fail. And we thank you today that you are almighty God. You're working things out for our good, and you're wanting us to grow and be equipped and to mature and let Christ be formed in us. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name.